During the holiday break, Mark Crilly did a video where he did a Jazza impersonation and included me in his video. And I, I really wanted to do a video on my main channel to return the favor, but I had like a content lineup that was already scheduled for release and I was taking time off. So I couldn't justify doing it, but I thought the very least I could do is give it a shot now. <laughs> Bear with me. Hello everybody, my name's Mark Crilly, and today we're going to be drawing an anime character. So I'm going to start off by using my immense experience and talent to very effortlessly and easily <laughs> draw at a level far below my normal standard. Uh, I'm also holding a camera while I do this. I know what you're thinking. Excuses, excuses. But, well, at the end of the day, you are uh, subject to the body that you're in, and and uh, and I'm in Jazz's body. I know what you're thinking, Mark. What what does it feel like? What does it feel like being in Jazz's body? Well, I can tell you that Australians have a strange uh, gravitational sense on their body because everything's slightly upside down. Uh, I being from America with a very rugged. Uh, American accent, kind of smooth as chocolate, as you can tell, uh, I tend to see the world upright. Um, there we go, we have a bit of a jazz ahead sketch here, um, done with a lack of talent because I left my talent in my other body, but fortunately I brought my voice with me. Well, that is it for today, folks. Thank you for watching, and a reminder to check out my uh, Mastering Manga 3 book. Now, uh, Jazza says manga. I'm not sure why, but uh, the word is manga. That uh, It is a Japanese word, and that's how it's pronounced. And uh, it's, it, it is a great book. Uh, don't use this as uh, an indication as to uh, the level of expertise shared in this book, because remember, this book was written while I was in my actual body. And as you can see, it's full of tons of useful information for drawing manga and anime, which Jazza isn't quite good at doing. So I'm going to go ahead and lay down this pencil, and I want to thank you all for watching, and I'm going to be back with another video real soon. <coughs> oh, that was a weird sensation. I feel like I was possessed by another being. <laughs> that was terrible. I'm sorry. But seriously, shout out. Mark Riley. He's amazing and an awesome dude. And I really enjoyed his shout out. I, I suspect he'll see this. So thank you, Mark. It was really fun to see your impression, but also see uh, my visual inclusion in your awesome Christmas art. So thank you. I'll put the link uh, for everyone in the description to go check out that video. It's really cool. So now a visit to the epic schedule today. I'm working on music, organizing and gathering for both the channel and the vlog. I'm working on channel banners. Uh, for, again, the main channel and the vlog. So in the past when I've wanted to add music, uh, I've gotten it from the YouTube section. So in the uh, Creator Studio panel on the browser, you can go to Audio Library, uh, and they have things like sound effects and music tracks, and you sort it by, you know, mood and, and uh, instrument and stuff. And these have been really cool, and I still will use these, but the problem is everyone uses them, and the coolest ones seem to sort of come up quite often. And uh, it's starting to unnerve me a bit that uh, sometimes I watch random videos and I'm like, ah, it feels a little bit like I've got less of a unique identity. So I'm trying out something different. This is called Audio Blocks. Uh, it's not free. The YouTube one is free. Uh, but Audio, Audio Blocks is um, like a hundred bucks a year. And uh, there's a whole bunch of different music. And you can search by type. It's a similar thing to the YouTube thing. You can search by mood and genre, instruments, and so on and so forth. And uh, if there's one I like, for example, that one I quite like, so I'll hit add. And uh, I have a bunch of different albums that I've created for different categorizations of how I like to group my music. And this one I would put in dramatic hard hit, save, and there it is. And then when you go to account and albums, you can see the different group things. You can see that I've got a bunch of different tracks in each of these. And you can view them one by one. This is promotional stuff, so random inspiring corporate sounding crap, which 
could also be categorized as sort of inspirational or whatever. So I'll probably rename it inspirational. But anyways, you can download them all at once, which is super useful. Oh, no, never mind. You have to pay more to download them all at once. Screw you, I'll download them individually, God damn it. Okay, I've downloaded all of the tracks. I think there's about 170 in total. Uh, and it gives me a pretty good variety. You can see this, uh, this is how I categorize it. And I've brought all of these into Premiere and they each have their own sequence. So for example, in the dramatic suspense sequence, it has all of the music I've categorized and downloaded into that. And then on top of that, I've also organized it so that uh, I've roughly gradiated it. So on the left side of the sequence, the music is a little less intense. And then the further it goes along to the right, the more intense it is. So in this dramatic suspense one, this is obviously less intense music. And then towards the end here, we get much more intense. This is my funky sequence. So there's less intense. And then there's more intense. Basically, this will allow me to sort of pick a category. Let's say if I want something cinematic, I can think, uh, okay, dramatic orchestra, double click on this sequence. And then I can think to myself, okay, do I want something pretty reasonably epic, but not too crazy, or do I want something intense? So less intense. You know, it's still got that drama orchestral feel. And then we have this stuff. And then I feel like having it all subcategorized like this will not only make editing faster, but it'll allow me to uh, pretty custom tailor all of the videos to capture the feel and emotions I want to get. This is whimsy fun. And then more intense. So the next thing I've done is I've uploaded all of those sequences with all of the music as individual videos and that all the content of those videos is the music just to see what's flagged. And as you can see, quite a lot of these have copyrighted content flagged, which is annoying because obviously I'm paying for a membership so I don't get these flags, but it's not for all of the music. So if I click on one of these, it'll show me specifically what tracks. There you go, so there's three tracks. So. I'm just going to do the easy thing and just delete the the uh, copyright flagged tracks from the uh, yeah. See, this one only has one. So basically, I might lose like four to five percent of the music I've gathered, but I still have over a hundred tracks. Let's see how that goes. Okay, I'm rendering another test. It's uh, still like over five hours of music, so I'm not that you know miffed or anything, but. Uh, yeah, I still have a suspicion a couple of them will be flagged, but it's just a sort of sifting process. YouTube's uh, copyright detection thing is like super militant. And uh, to be honest, I'd probably still be able to use all of these things that are being flagged, but uh, it would just be a process of disputing them every time and proving that I have the license, which I do have. Um, so I'd rather not do that. So I'm just gonna figure out which ones aren't flagging uh, and use those. Alrighty, I've been playing around with branding for a couple of hours now and to test it out, I put together this sample screen preview thing in Photoshop. This is just a cropped screenshot of my channel page. Uh, and I'm playing around with the banner and the character icon or the channel icon. I'm really self-conscious changing anything about the channel, maybe just because it's so like solidified in my brain because it's been like this for years and years and years. But uh, anyway, it is time for a change and this is what I've got so far. So the new channel icon is this. Reason being is it's always felt weird to me that he's facing out and away from the channel and then in comments, the comments are always on the right of the image. And again, sort of weird that he's always facing away from that. Uh, also updating the, the icon and the character profile to be more close to my current avatar. Uh, the old one had a five o'clock shadow and a little bit more of a uh, blocky face, I suppose you could say, whereas this is a little bit more of a little cartoony face. Um, and basically this is like a clipping mask um, Photoshop file. So this is the, the channel icon thing and I have this test circle to see what it looks like. In, a, in that circle form when it's next to comments. 
and then basically every time I make a change and save it, it updates in here. And then last but not least, this is dum, 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 the new channel banner. So colors are a lot brighter, uh, sort of represents the chaotic fun and creativity of the channel. Uh, I definitely like the, the bright primary colors being a, a major part of the, the image now. I love that my favorite color, that golden yellow is a rich part of the logo. It's a big change from the old <laughs> logo uh, banner topper, but um, I like it. I think it has a, a lot of energy and a lot of, it feels fun. And I feel like if I arrived to this YouTube channel as opposed to this YouTube channel, I don't know. This feels like it represents that, you know, the whole tutorial learning thing, which is cool, but also can feel a little lackluster if people are arriving for the first time. Whereas I feel like this now represents what the channel is. Uh, and, and to me that quite simply put, that is this channel is about having fun with art and uh, yeah, I'm hoping you guys like it. Give me your feedback. I'm interested in what you think. All right, this is it. This is the, the scary bit. Change channel art. Boom, boom, boom. That's pretty cool. So it shows what it looks like on mobile, TV and desktop. It is done. That being said, uh, the actual icon takes a while to update, so that might, I don't know, take a day or two, but there you go, the change is made, I hope you like it. It feels really disarming. <laughs> it's so weird, it feels like, it feels like having a new mural behind me, you know what I mean? Like I've seen the same thing for years, one day I will have a different background, you know, and that'll be weird when that comes, but it, just changing the banner and icon of the channel is, is one of the weirdest feelings ever because it's been like this core part of identifying the challenge channel and um, Yeah, it's cool though. Like it's a good feeling. It's just slightly unnerving I do feel though that you know as we reach and pass a million subscribers in the next couple of months and as our content gets more exciting and fun I do feel like it, it's time for a bit of a fresh approach as I'm doing all this refreshing branding stuff over the next few days. Speaking of which, tomorrow is sort of a catch up day. <laughs> and that's why I keep Fridays free because there's a bunch of bits and pieces that I haven't been able to finish or get to. Uh, so hopefully I'll be able to get all that done and catch up tomorrow. That being said, it's time for the question of the day. Kai Squid says, I bought your Photoshop brushes, but for some reason that looks pixely. Can you help me? Uh, it looks pixely because the resolution that they were made to work for uh, is big. So my default canvas size is 4000 by 2250. And that's my smallest canvas size usually. I sometimes go smaller, like 1080p. But honestly, the custom brushes that I made are really built for high scale, high resolution digital painting and print image production, like for the books and for posters and things like that. So it really is for high resolutions. So the answer to your question really is that they look pixely because some of them need to have really sharp edges and only looks nice at high resolution. So just keep that in mind. Uh, otherwise, I hope you enjoy them. Uh, thank you all for watching and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Until then, I'll see you later.